I want to remind us today that we have been sent to do only one thing. To preach the good news to every creature everywhere all over the world. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 24, just one verse, verse 14. Jesus said, and this good news of the kingdom of God will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. This, T-H-I-S, this good news. We don't have two good newses. It's only one good news. And this particular good news must be preached, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Until we get this good news, this result-based good news, this miracle-loaded good news, this destiny recovering, destiny changing good news is preached to all in all the world with proofs we have not done our work and the end will not come. Now question, can you truly say we have preached this good news everywhere? The simple answer is no. Why? Because what authenticates and validates the good news has not become made noticeable by those who are listening to the church. Look at the church you go to. Look at that church. Tell me, can you really say that the people there are free in every sense of the word free as Christ is free? If they are not, they have not heard the good news. Listen, the good news is not telling people die and go to heaven or be born again, die and go to heaven. That's not the good news. The good news is bringing solutions to people. So I want to briefly share with us today what the good news entails and how you can know when the good news is preached. Please hear me. Until the proofs are made manifest to the hearers, we have not preached the good news. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus went about all Galilee, underline the word all, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the coming of the kingdom of God to this end. Jesus preached the arrival of all God is here on earth to his listeners. God has come for what? To leave you in sin? To leave you in your sickness? To leave you in your problems? No. God has come to deal with every issue that came upon man. Due to the fall of Adam. Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and the paralytics, and he healed them all. Until the message we preach 
profess solutions to the problems of the people who haven't preached the good news. I repeat, until the words we speak to the people create solutions that will address their problems, we haven't preached the good news. So, what is the gospel or the good news? Number one, the gospel or the good news is news that is good to all the hearers in spite of their shortcomings, in spite of their misdeeds, in spite of their mistakes, sins, transgressions, iniquities, errors, or any wrong thing they have done. If we come with words that condemn, words that bring them down deeper into their problems than they were when they heard us, we have not preached the good news. The good news is news from our good God, the Heavenly Father who is in heaven, to every creature everywhere, announcing you are not condemned no matter what you have done. And that problem you are in will not mark your end, regardless of the reasons why you are in that problem. Listen, the good news does not bring anything else other than provisions of God that addresses every problem of man. So you are not preaching the good news if you tell them God loves you and he wants your sins forgiven while you remain sick, you remain poor, you remain a captive, living under a curse, begging to eat. That is not good news. The good news is there is enough super abundant provisions available now, here on earth now, made available by God through Jesus Christ to address all of your problems, to meet all of your needs, to solve all of your problems, to bring you out of every pit that sin and its evil effects may have pushed you into. We have not spoken the good news until the good news is manifested tangibly, practically, in the lives of our listeners. So it is not good news to tell the poor that your sins can be forgiven by God because Christ died for your sins while you live in a hole every day with five children struggling to eat. That's not good news. No, that's not what we're here for. Hear me. We are here to solve problems. That is good news. We are here to create solutions if they're not there. We are here to make sure that any problem that is not in heaven right now is not seen in the life of anyone that listens to us and accepts Christ as their Lord and Savior. In every area of life, we must meet their needs, spiritually, physically, materially, in every area. Until that is done, we have not brought them the good news. The good news is not you can be forgiven of your sin and live in sickness, live in poverty, live as a captive, live bound, and then when you die, you have a hope of going to heaven. That's not what Christ came here for. Christ brought heaven to earth. Christ, when God made man, God put man in Eden. Eden was heaven on earth. Adam lived and enjoyed every provision of God in heaven here on earth. And the will of God is for every human being that has missed that to be restored until everyone is experiencing the reality of heaven on earth. That's why Christ preached, repent, believe the gospel, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. And here are the proofs. He fed the hungry. He cast out devils. He healed the sick of every sickness of every disease, whatever is not in God, that any human being has, Christ erased that out of the life of that person. Unbelief, fear, doubt, worry, whatever has captured human beings' souls, their mind, their will, their emotion, and has reduced them 
into nothing. Those things, Christ addressed them by building their royalty status, letting them know again that the will of God is for them to be free, to be like God. Hallelujah. That is what we are here to do. God's program is for his will to be done on earth as his will is done in heaven. The will of God is not sickness. The will of God is not captivity. The will of God is not bondage. The will of God is not suffering. The will of God is not sorrow. It's not grief. God's will is not pain. The will of God is not you going through mischievous assaults from the pit of hell. The will of God is not you dying because of the sins you have committed. Christ died on your behalf. The will of God is not for you to live under any curse. No. God's will is your eternal, total freedom. For you to have God's divine nature here on earth. To have eternal life. The endless life that sickness can't terminate. That disease can't stop. God wants you to be like him right now. That is what the good news is all about. You are not telling somebody the good news. If you see a harlot and you say, God said, if you don't repent, you are headed for hell. That's not good news. The good news is that you are a harlot. A woman was caught in the act of adultery. Woman, you are not condemned. Go and sin no more. You are free. That's freedom. That's freedom. A woman had married five husbands and had divorced them and was living with the sixth one. Christ said, woman, I am the Messiah. She believed, and that was the end of our deal. Set free by the Lord. Set free by the Lord. God is looking for worshippers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The good news is that no matter your background, you can become a worshipper of God in spirit and in truth. That's the good news. So we must understand that the good news we are said to preach is not to condemn people for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, no, but that the whole world through him, the whole world, no matter where you are, no matter what you have done, for as long as you are still breathing, that the whole world through him might be saved. So Christ did not come to condemn. It is sad that preachers are cursing witches and wizards. They are cursing people who the devil has captured and is working so hard to destroy. And for them, they are strong, they are mighty, they are powerful because they can cause a witch to die. You are powerless. You are only a killer. You are powerful when you can cast out that spirit of witchcraft and deliver that person from being possessed by a devil of witchcraft and being destroyed by that evil spirit. Jesus received all who were demon-possessed and he healed them all. He received those who were paralytic. He healed them all. He received those who were lunatic, insane, possessed by a wicked spirit. He set them free. The church is not busy doing this. We are busy trying to make a living. I pray that God will help you to wake up and to face the gospel that we have been sent to preach. We are sent to preach the good news that regardless of your misdeeds, Christ came for you to be saved and for you to live here on earth and enjoy every provision of God available in heaven right now. To this life, I welcome you. It doesn't take anything other than your faith in Christ who loved you and I while we were yet sinners, died, dead in sins, died for us on the cross, was buried on the third day, was raised up from the dead for our justification. If you believe he did that for you and you confess him as your Lord and Savior right now, you are free. And once you are free, you need to get attached to a very sound, scripturally based church where you can hear the truth. Because it is your continuity in hearing the truth of what Christ has done for you concerning every area of your life in totality that will enforce your total freedom and your enjoyment. Listen, you can be saved and go to heaven, but you can die poor. Now, if you know what Christ has done for you that is to terminate your poverty, you can walk out on the devil and live an affluent way of life. More so, if you are in a community of believers where they understand that we are not here 
as individuals, but as a family. And all we have is for all of us. That is what Jesus, mission God has represent. All we have is for all of us. Our Father has given it to us, and we must make sure that everyone who God brings into this platform has all he or she needs to live the best kind of life here on earth and now. This is the life we present to you. This is the life I welcome you to. Welcome. It's a new day for you. I will see you in our next video. Peace and God bless.